I reject this verdict. You're, you're yes. saying I'm guilty yes. of this offence, yes. I reject this verdict. I'm glued on here and I'm live streaming this so that you know that I'm protesting at the participants of this court. Um, that's not me that's guilty, it's the government that's guilty. They are guilty of huge dereliction of duty. And all of us, all of you who have children, I don't have children, I do it for your children and your grandchildren. And it's no good pretending not to listen because this is really important. My name is Sue Parfit. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Bristol. And I'm a member of Christian Climate Action and engaged in acts of civil disobedience to draw attention to the fact that the government is highly negligent in its lack of urgent response to the climate catastrophe. So we're sitting, we're glued um, onto the furniture. We had a lovely... Um, bright XR pink um, banner. banner saying that this court is complicit in climate crime, but that was removed. The magistrates courts in general are not allowing the plea of necessity for our resist, uh, peaceful resistance to climate breakdown. And the threat to humanity and God's creation is immediate and is existential. Hey, I'm Ruth Jarman um, and I've just been um, arrested and put in a police cell again for um, contempt of court because we think that, sh the, that the court system is complicit in climate crime. Matthew 5, when Jesus says, you know, if somebody wants to sue you for your cloak, then hand over your tunic as well. And that is, that is asking us to disobey in the dock, basically. So there is that Christian precedent and you can't get better Christian precedent than, precedent than Jesus himself and um and so there is that and then and also the response from people people were inspired to do more um people were inspired and people got it that the court system is complicit in climate crime so yes if it you just want to do everything that helps that you want to just lay yourself open and say right if this helps then it must be the right thing to do Of all the movements of big social movements in the past, they've all involved at some point people being prepared to put their bodies on the line, get arrested and go to prison. Um, and uh, one might say, well, what's the point of it? And at the time, it's not always clear to see what the point of it is. But all we can tell is that history suggests that there is an important moment of crossing the line into civil disobedience. And I think I'd put it as being to do for a Christian and as a priest to say, it's about, it's not about disobedience, it's about obedience to God. It's about being quite clear. And I've, I've really never been quite as clear as this in my life about what God is intending and wanting, but quite clear that God does need people to put their bodies on the line, to lay down their lives for others. And that may sound a bit overdramatic, um, but at this time of year, we, we're thinking about that. And to follow Jesus in the steps of his civil disobedience and the early church. And I think that's what is crucial to me that the church today in, in all denominations is unrecognizable really from the early church for which it was a revolving door of meeting, praying, going out and preaching, getting arrested, going to prison, coming out, meeting, praying, etc., etc. And I think somehow in this most critical time, the most critical time that the planet and humanity has ever faced, we surely are called to do that now.
name is Helen Burnett. I'm a priest in the Church of England. I'm the vicar of St. Peter and St. Paul's in Chaldon and the Diocese of Southwark. And I've recently been on trial. I was prepared to break the law because I think there is a higher law than the law of the land when it comes to honouring the sanctity of all life. I was overwhelmed by a sense that the only thing left in my capacity as a human being was to stay and to pray in the place that would inconvenience and cause a disruption. Um, and that, that was part of my faith calling, to be a person of faith in that space at that time. In an action put together by Extinction Rebellion, I may be the only person um, of faith in a particular group. And I think that's very powerful, that we're not all together doing these things in a little kind of cosy Christian group. We're doing this amongst the community of people who similarly feel moved to act. And one of the things that's very powerful about both Extinction Rebellion and Christian Climate Action is the use of ritual and the use of the spiritual side of everybody's lives, not just Christians, that there is an interfaith group and people of no faith but who still feel that there is something of the sacred in this crisis, that it's a spiritual crisis as well as a physical one. And I suppose what we did was not proportionate. <laughs> it was not enough. Um, how could we ever do enough given the actual suffering of actual people as we stood in court? And that was one of our main points was that as we stood in court and as we had sat on the pavement in London, People are dying because of the climate emergency. I'm Mark Coleman. I'm a priest in the Diocese of Manchester, Church of England. I was arrested in October 2019. In, in our case uh, for obstructing the highway, Helen uh, gave a beautiful and powerful uh, speech about the moral and Christian imperatives. And I took on the role of acting as our legal defense, or whether well, it seemed to work out most that way. And it was in, I'd studied law at university and then turned away from the law, feeling a Christian vocation. Um, and so it was quite fun to readopt the law. And we'd had a super help from a, a barrister who gave us free help. Um, but it struck me with all that stuff, the legal stuff, that it was all empty. It revealed how the, it just wasn't functioning in a good way. The state was, had no clothes on. It made a lot of its law, but the law wasn't really about justice. The law was failing, as, as others have said. Um, and there was a point where I, I, I think I said to the magistrates, uh, the law clearly isn't working because we have to prove that we're being reasonable and we're acting proportionately for the defences to function. And I said, all we did was sit on the road with a climate emergency. You could say that we were acting in a rather pathetic and timid manner, just sitting on the road. We should be a lot angrier and doing a lot more action. Wouldn't you say, magistrates? I thought it was a very powerful point, but they didn't seem to take it on board and we were convicted. I know that this is not asking a very great sacrifice of me, actually. Um, and, and what it does is, it, 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 the feelings, therefore, are... They, I do have fear. I do have fear the day before the action, for sure. But once it's underway, it's a question of handing over. And I think there's something very spiritual and biblical about the fact that we hand ourselves over to others to do what they will with us. Um, and we, it's, it's like the handing over to God, really. Because if we believe that God is deeply in this, then that is what we're doing. Part of the feelings also are feelings of joy, I have to say. I mean, the first time I was arrested was on Maundy Thursday, and all I could think was, um, in 2019, this is the night that Jesus was arrested and handed himself over. And also, it's the joy of having opportunities, something St. Paul talks about, doesn't he, in the first chapter of Philippians. Um, all this, he says, about being in prison, all this is going good for the church. Many brothers and sisters in the prison have come to realize why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I'm sure we've all had the experience of talking with officials and 
prison guards and police and court officials about why we're doing it. And we're doing it for as we're followers of Christ. That's why we're doing it. I'm Ben Hughes. I'm a member of Christian Climate Action. And I was recently in prison for contempt of court. We've got huh. another film. I'm, no, I'm not, <laughs> Can you turn it off? I'm not turning it off because I'm in a, I'm in a total agreement. It's absolute madness. We cannot carry on like this. We must listen to the cries to stop the violence. And we should be listening to what the protesters are saying rather than stamping down our voice. It's just so upsetting, so upsetting. I just want to see all these protests just being dismissed. The courts are just dismissing defense of necessity and finding everyone guilty. And so they are complicit. We should, uh... At the moment, you're going to be arrested for contempt of court. Yes, Mr. Lecker. So. They had to wait for the the police unbonding team to unstick us. Then we were taken to the dock and prosecuted for the contempt of court and sent to prison for 14 days. So it was a very daunting experience and you change into your prison clothes and that uncertainty of what was going to come next. Um, fortunately, I spent the time in a cell with Tim, so that actually worked out very well. Uh, my name's Tim Hughes. I'm a priest in the Church of England. I was um, acquitted in my trial the previous week, um, but I went to support Ben um, with with his trial, and... Um, at the during and so I went as his uh, as a supporter, and while he was gluing on and um, live streaming, they didn't seem to be taking much notice of me, and I did the same. Um, and uh, so we were live streaming each other, um, and again uh, we were taken to the dock and, and then finished up in Wandsworth, Wandsworth prison. Uh, my I was stimulated to do that because. Um, between the week of my trial and um, the week of Ben's trial, uh, the government had announced that it was going to spend £10 billion on um, uh, increasing nuclear warheads at a time when we should actually be spending um, uh, massive amounts of money on trying to avert climate, uh, the climate crisis uh, rather than spending the petty cash on it, which the government seemed determined to do. My, I was animated and glued on because of the gap between the government rhetoric and government action. If somebody told me I was going to do that 10 years ago, um, I'd have been horrified because I'm a, I've been a law-abiding citizen uh, all my life. And um, But actually, the, um, the laws are absurd that, uh, that treat us in, in this uh, way when we're trying to draw attention to the planet burning while the government fiddles. I'm Barbara Wilson. I'm a lay Roman Catholic and a member of Christian Climate Action. I've been supporting Ben and Tim during their time in prison. I was a channel mostly for Ben to send on the emails, but also to, to talk to Ben when he was able to, to phone us and to pass his news back to his family, to his parish um, and, and to others in Christian Climate Action. So, so there was a, a bit of a dialogue between us. And um, I think that, I, I hope that helped them. And I think it helped people to, to carry on praying. There was this very, very strong network of prayer that was, was supporting them both. But as a result of that, we were able to receive emails which um, Gaynor and Barbara were um, passing to us, cutting and pasting and passing to us uh, from parishioners and um, members, dear members of Christian Climate Action. I say dear members, I've only been a 
only been a member for a matter of a few weeks, but actually it feels like a home. Um, and a family I've never met before, but have, um, I've discovered. Um, and um, so it was amazing to be able to receive those messages that were sort of poked at the door uh, once or twice a day. Um, and from people that I knew, people that I didn't, um, and uh, it was amazingly uplifting. Actually, I found it quite, quite um, overwhelming, uh, the support. Um, I had to go and have a sort of wash afterwards after reading them on one occasion. But it was, um, it was so good to be far, part of a community, to be aware that we weren't, hadn't been forgotten, but actually that we were being supported and, and uh, prayed for and upheld. And um, it was amazing. Dondo's obscurity and So as, as we settle, perhaps we might just settle in our seats, um, still ourselves for a moment, think about our breath, and perhaps think about breathing in the presence of the Holy Spirit, asking her to be with us in our prayer time this morning. Within our darkest hour, you kindle a flame that never died. The acceptance of suffering in our pursuit of justice and the proclamation of the truth is essential to nonviolence. One place to test our growth in unconditional love is in prison for our peacemaking activities. Prison is a place where our spiritual roots will be tested and blossom where that accepted suffering for justice's sake can be lived to the fullest, where our non-violence can come full circle as we dwell in the peace of God among the poor. It is a place where the unconditional love in our hearts and the prayerful non-violence of our entire lives can bear fruit through our peaceful contemplation. Our silent presence can remind the world about the basic issues of justice and peace. It did actually resonate very powerfully with the early church in the sense that we were in prison and I was, I felt that it was right that we should be there. I mean, I, I did the contempt knowing that that was hoping in a respect that that was going to happen because I, I felt that I, there was few other actions that I could take. I found the prison officers, um, they, they found it difficult to understand that I was on a, um, on a fast while I was in prison. Um, and they kept trying to force food on us. Couldn't understand why I'd be on a, on a fast, but it was something that I felt that I wanted to do. Um, I was, felt that I was a, it was a, an earth fast for me, fasting for the planet and helping me to, it was something of a prayer. And the reason that um, it was something of a prayer for me was because I actually find during this time of climate, climate crisis, I find it very difficult to articulate words in prayer. Um, and I felt, felt that by the fast, it was the best prayer that I could make uh, while I was in prison on behalf of the, for the planet. And in fact, I got a um, response from um, um, a, a, a few atheists who were saying that um, they were, had been uh, disillusioned by the stance of the church in years past with uh, climate change and other issues. And that actually the action that Ben and I were taking had restored their sense that Christians were standing up and taking these issues seriously. What on earth is the church saying when it says it cannot condone breaking the law, which is what the diocese said when Tim and um, Ben were imprisoned. And somehow I think CCA has to say to the church and the powers of the church, the hierarchy of the church, we've got to do better than that. Um, it's total nonsense. Uh, the early church was breaking the law all the time up until Constantine. I mean, that was part of, 
people apparently didn't get baptized until they nearly they died because it was so terrifying to be a Christian. In the name of God, creator, redeemer and sustainer. Amen. Amen. We celebrate this Eucharist, friends, in solidarity with all of creation, in solidarity with all who have been imprisoned, in solidarity with all who have passed the nights on the streets. What we're about is being on the streets, the visible church, to wake up the church that is not on the streets but needs to be. In many ways, Extinction Rebellion is like the church I always wanted to be part of, in that it has people gathering together around love, nonviolence, inclusion, good principles of listening, that sort of thing. So, so many ingredients of church. So my Extinction Rebellion world is alongside my Christian climate action world with activism and a, an open spirit, but with prayer and teaching and sharing of learning has given me a, a renewed vision of church and, and I just pray that the, the institutional church, the established churches of whatever denomination just wake up a bit because we seem rather irrelevant in our institutional form I think just so out of step and there's not much time left. But I think that's part of what we need to do actually to challenge the bishops, uh, you know the fact that they Latin American bishops and the South African bishops, of course, uh, 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 about apartheid. I mean, we need to say to the bishops, you know, it must be very cozy and lovely and make you feel ever so good to be part of the House of Lords and go up and, you know, do all that stuff. But this has absolutely nothing to do with the gospel. And, um, you know, of course, the answer will be, oh, but he gives us opportunities and influence and all the rest of it. A bit like being a shareholder in Shell or something. But this is all nonsense, really. And we have to say to, I mean, I, I'm really very, very committed to this idea that we've got to nip this mantra in the bud before it gains credence that we cannot condone breaking the law. We have to try to get over to bishops, I think, right now, the fact this has nothing to do with the gospel. Uh, we're not here to worship the law of any particular country. Of course, the law is there for our good and it behoves us to be scrupulous law keepers when the law is good, but it has nothing to do with being obedient to God. And there is a sense that um, both in the Christian community and in the non-Christian community, there is an acknowledgement that there is a need for action beyond, which involves breaking the law. And one of the things that I have found is the huge acceptance by the non-Christian activists of what we represent and I think I was quite worried that I would not get that, that I would be, you know, what are you doing here in your dog collar? Uh, the huge acceptance and huge encouragement. I mean, the love and encouragement that Mark has experienced and, and describes as church is what I have felt in my Extinction Rebellion group. Very much that I'm valued for what I am as a Christian and for somebody visibly with a role within the church. Um, alongside people who would not cross the threshold of a parish church, but who invite me to speak, to lead um, faith at the gate um, locally at a, an oil extraction plant, and are happy to pray and meditate with me, which is quite a new phenomenon. Pope Francis has taken quite a strong lead in, in publishing an encyclical, um, Laudato Si, and that has been very inspirational for an awful lot of Catholics. Well, basically, he, he starts with several chapters about there being this, this major climate emergency and how we need to respond to it. And he talks about personal ecological conversions, you know, so, so that each, each of us as an individual has, has to respond and do something. But each of us as an individual also should act politically and in whatever way is appropriate. He doesn't say we should break the law, but he does say we should seek to influence our governments and, you know, 
the appropriate authorities so that you know, appropriate action um, is taken. And you know, it's pretty clear that when the Paris Climate Conference happened in 2015 and the encyclical was published a few months before, it was quite influential in helping move countries on to, um, to make the pledges that they made. And, and it, has, it has had quite a big influence in you know, ordinary parishes up and down the country here and, and all over the world, but just not far enough, not fast enough. The church's job is to be prophetic, isn't it? And what could be more important than talking, telling the truth about the climate crisis? And that is what the church should be doing. And it is, it is also what us as Christians, it is our job to tell the truth about the climate crisis. Nothing says as clearly and as simply that we are in an emergency as breaking the law of the land. It just, it just does. That's what people, people ask even if they don't like it, they will ask in their mind, even if they don't ask you, why is she doing that? Um, it must be serious. Um, so I think it is a, it's a Christian's job to um, go beyond what is normal for the culture that we live in. And that often might involve breaking the law and um, or might be seen as breaking the law because actually we're, we're not breaking the law because there's a higher law. Um, we might be breaking some laws, but we are within a higher law. Um, so yes, I guess we, and this year, you know, COP, if it happens, um, G7, this is the year to do it. So let's get on with it. Um, I, I follow on from what Ruth is saying that COP26 for me is what happens next. Um, whatever my Extinction Rebellion groups do, I will be a part of, but I'm very excited about COP26 and about the pilgrimage that we will be walking from London to Glasgow. And that again is, you know, absolutely grounded in, Christian practice to walk, to pray, to pilgrimage, and to be in that way also a witness, a visible witness. And then coming back to, to Ben and Tim getting all those support letters, um, emails in, in prison, a lot of people have been inspired. And I think one of the things that we as CCA probably need to do is, is to energize that inspiration to get people to do things. I, th I think that's you know, one of the gifts that, that all of you that have, have been at the front of it can give to other people as well. I can't stop and this is the problem. Well, maybe it's a good thing, but no, I can't stop. <laughs> I have to continue and I feel, I guess, because of our duty to creation, we don't have a choice, do we? I think as Ben says, we, we have to keep on keeping on according to the way God is calling us. And so discernment and prayer must be absolutely continue and increasingly be at the heart of anything and everything we do. I remember reading somewhere, the more activist you are, the more time you need to spend in contemplative prayer each day. This coming week, there's a whole lot of things to pray for, which will be in the prayer email, but I just thought I'd remind you. On Tuesday, Nadira is in court for obstruction of the highway. On Thursday, Martin Newell is in court. I can't remember which, which of his many actions he's in court for, but I will find out. And on Friday, Sue is in court. So there's plenty, plenty of stuff to pray for this coming week, please.